if you are in school and you're just now starting to scan or you're just now starting ultrasound training, this video is for you. I'm going to go over 13 scanning basics. These are fundamentals to accurately performing ultrasounds. This is beginner knowledge. However, it might seem unimportant. It might seem insignificant until you skip a step. Then your whole exam or your whole day is ruined. Once you do these things, these basic things, everything else becomes easier. I promise you. I have my laptop here for notes. Now, number one, check the patient's history. What exams have they had performed recently? Do they have other imaging that has demonstrated some pathology already? Because sometimes if you skip this part and you just go straight into scanning, you come across something that is crazy. And you're like, oh my gosh, what is this? What is this? It has already been found and has already been documented. You should have checked the previous exams and then you would have known. You want to see if they have certain diseases like diabetes, hypertension, PCOS, just different things that should be documented in the patient's chart. Checking the history, you can go ahead and get different measurements for a certain pathology if you, if you will have to compare the pathology. And sometimes if it's a difficult scan, you can see the previous son sonographer's images and see, oh, okay, I see how this is going to go. I can see how this is going to pan out. Next, you want to verify the correct patient every single time. I'm telling you this from experience. When you look at the patient's wristband, actively read the wristband. When you check the exam that you have on your screen, actively read the date of birth. Ask the patient every single time. If you're doing portable, don't even turn on the machine until you have checked the date of birth, the name and date of birth. If they're supposed to have a wristband, then you need to let someone know that this patient does not have what they need. Or if you read the wristband, the patient tells you a different date of birth than it was on the wristband. You need to be notifying someone so that can be corrected in the system. Trust me, performing an exam on the wrong patient is a bad day for everybody involved. Do not do it. Next, you want to verify the correct exam. So what I usually do is explain what the exam involves before I begin the exam. And this benefits not just the patient, but also myself. When I explain what I'm about to do, they can be like, wait, hold up. My pain is actually over here. Why are you checking over here? And listen, when I tell you to listen to the patient, oh my goodness, listen to the patient. Because a lot of times the doctors are not even listening to the patient. Or they have just simply made a mistake. They have documented the wrong laterality or something of that nature. Listen to your patient because some of them, yes, they might be mentally unstable, but other ones, they know exactly what they're talking about. They know the previous exams that they have had. And patients help you, have helped me more times than I can count. They're like, wait, no. And I listen to them. I stop and go check on the exam. I go verify things with the doctor. Sometimes it's my mistake. Someone, sometimes it's someone else's mistake. Or sometimes someone just really doesn't understand what they are ordering and the patient needs a different exam than what has been ordered. Always explain the exam to the patient for their benefit so that they can know what you're about to do before you do it and why are you touching them? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Because the patient should be informed, but also this helps yourself. There are a lot of terms that you need to understand when you're scanning. These include one, anechoic, that means dark, black, hyperechoic, that means brighter than the other surrounding tissues. Hypoechoic means darker than the surrounding tissues. Isoechoic means a similar echo texture to the surrounding tissues. Echogenic, that means bright. They might have posterior acoustic shadowing, so it would be dark below your image. Very bright. A lot of times bone might show up very echogenic on a patient. Stones, gallstones, kidney stones, those will show up as echogenic on a patient. Important terms to know. The next scanning basic is to understand why each organ is being observed. When you are studying pathology, for example, this can help you to keep in mind 
why you are looking for certain things. Why do you look at the hepatic veins? Well, there's Bud Chiari syndrome. The patient can have webbing within those hepatic veins. So that's why you're looking at them. You want to make sure that those veins are free of any webbing or thrombosis. Each image in your protocol, you should understand why you just took that image. This is going to make you a better sonographer. For example, why are you looking at the endo endometrium? You want to make sure there's no abnormal thickening. There's no retained products of conception in the postpartum patient. There are so many things that you need to be keeping in mind wh while you're scanning and not just blindly taking images. We need diagnostic imaging to be performed. The next thing you want to do is make sure the patient is in the correct position. This helped so much. When I first started learning to do um, DVT studies or venous duplex exams. Part of why it took me so long, it took me probably 30 minutes per leg on one patient was because I didn't have the patient's leg in, in the proper position. I did not have their knee externally rotated. So that made the whole exam way more difficult than it had to be because I did not open up the veins by having them in the proper position. Now, so certain patients, they cannot be in the exact position you need them to be in. So sometimes you do have to get creative to get them as close as possible to the position that you need them in. Next, when you hold the probe, do not have a pinch grip. Do not hold the probe like this. Don't do it. A lot of times I will have the probe with my first and my thumb and my ring finger or just my thumb over here and my rest of my fingers on the other side of the probe. So when I first started learning transvaginal <laughs> exams at one of the facilities, those people were great, but I was nervous and I was just holding the probe super tight and I didn't even realize it. Another sonographer, she came behind me and was trying to adjust the probe to help me to get the image the way it should have been. And she said, Drew, take the death grip off the probe. And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, sorry. So yes, have a gentle grip on the probe. Don't have a pinch grip because that's going to hurt you long term. Yes, learn how to properly hold the probe in a way that allows you to have the most mobility in your wrist. You can tilt front to back, side to side. You have your probe held in a similar way as this. Next, on the machine, for each exam, you want to make sure you are selecting the correct exam preset. So for each type of exam, typically the machines will come programmed or the sales person will program the machine with different presets for each exam. If you have the wrong preset for, the, for your exam, your images will not look as high quality as they could. So before each exam, if you have a renal exam, you can choose a renal preset. If you're doing a GYN exam, then you can select a GYN preset. Don't have it on OB when you're scan scanning GYN. So that can alter the, your image and you'll be looking at it like, this looks a little funny. It's because of the preset sometimes. Also, make sure you are adjusting the gain. My tip for adjusting the gain, at first, Decrease your output power. Whenever you're scanning, we should be decreasing the output power. Yes, we should be. And then turn the gain all the way up. And for example, if you have, if you're scanning the liver, turn your gain all the way up and then slowly turn it down until all the vessels in your image are black. They show up black on the screen. Then your gain is correctly adjusted. So I got that tip from one of my previous preceptors in school. Also, adjust your TGC so that from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen, all the echoes are similar brightness. The next thing you want to do is get the patient to help you. You do not have to do all the work. You get the patient to help you. Get them to use their breathing techniques. Hold in the deep breath and hold it. Don't be afraid to ask them as many times as you need to, as long as they are not <laughs> wheezing or, or anything, then they can do it. So you can ask them to stop talking during your exam so you can focus or so that your, your, the organ you are observing is not constantly moving. You can ask them to stop talking. It's okay. 
you can easily say, we can pick up the conversation at the end of the exam. Also, you can ask the patient to move closer to you. Ask the patient to move as close to you as possible so that you are not having to constantly extend your arm and wear out your shoulder. So the patient, keep this in mind, the patient can be uncomfortable for 30 minutes. You're doing this all day, every day, not them. So if they're uncomfortable for 30 minutes, they will live. If you're uncomfortable for 30 minutes over and over again, every single day, the whole day, you're gonna pay for it. And it can be a, hard, a huge price. Next, imaging planes. This, is, this can be confusing. So longitudinal is when you are scanning in the typical longitudinal or sagittal plane, then your notch is facing the patient's head. The left side of your screen will be superior on the patient. The right side of the screen will be inferior on the patient. When you're in transverse, you will have the notch of the probe facing yourself. The left side of the screen will be the patient's right, and the right side of the screen will be the patient's left. I know this is confusing, but I imagine the patient's body being on the screen and a cross section of the body of the patient's body being on the screen, not being flipped, being moved laterally onto the screen. So nothing is flipped, everything is just slid over. So when I have my probe here, right side, their body is just being shown on the screen, right side, on the left side of the screen. I hope you can make sense of that. That's the only way I can describe it. Scanning with ultrasound is a lot of times thinking outside of the box, thinking in a completely different way that you would normally think. So it does take time. So longitudinal versus transverse. This gets confusing because certain organs, you, the longitudinal is aligned with the parasagittal plane. It's aligned with the midline, parallel to the midline. When you have your transducer perfectly longitudinal, the notch facing the patient's head, this would include the liver, the pancreas and the thyroid. So, and also likewise, when you turn transverse on those image, on that image, the notch is directly facing yourself. However, the organs that you image in long and transverse, quote unquote, the long is long for that organ. You simply stretch out the organ as long as possible as wide as possible on your image and you count that as long. These organs would include the ovaries, the uterus, and the kidneys. So it doesn't matter if it lines up with the parasagittal plane or not. You are simply stretching out the organ as long as you can and also the gallbladder too. You are stretching out that organ as long as you can, you are labeling that as long. Whenever you turn 90 degrees from whatever that is, if, if you're long for that organ, has the probe like this, you're gonna turn like this to get the transverse image. It is not gonna be perfectly coronal like you would be for the liver, for example. Also, cystic versus solid. This is very important to comprehend. Cystic structures will likely be anechoic. They will be dark, and then they will have echogenic or brightness posterior to them. Now, on the other hand, solid objects, many times they'll be isoechoic, or a similar echo texture to the surrounding organs. They will appear gray on your image. And lastly, last thing is knowing what to do when you see pathology. So there are a number of things that you want to do. Do not forget to do these things when you come across pathology. Make sure you check these off your list. You get a 2D image in long and in transverse. So you can take those images without measurements. You also want to, if you, if it's something that can be measured, image in long and transverse with measurements. You might want to do long and transverse with color. Also, when you measure, you want length, width, and height. And lastly, you might want to take a Cine clip. If your facility is okay with that, take a Cine clip for certain things. And this will help you to make sure that when you go back and review the image or when someone else comes later on to repeat the exam, they can see exactly what you are seeing. And also the radiologist can see exactly what you are seeing and get a better image of what is going on with that patient. 
So I hope these scanning basics were helpful to you. And let me know if this type of video was helpful and leave a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, definitely subscribe and also check out my tutorial videos on how to perform different exams and I'll see you in the next video.